Man, there are a lot of albums on this list. A lot of albums on this list. What's up, guys? UTXJG the Don. Happy holidays to you and yours. And it's about that time again. Now, as you all know, for the people that have been rocking with me for a minute, 2014, I decided to do a top five albums and top five mixtapes of 2014. And I did it again for 2015. Welp, we are around that time again. So, 2016, top five rap slash hip hop albums. This year has to be the toughest year I've ever done, given the number of albums that I see on this list here. I was going to do a top 10, but I decided to stick to the format that I had and do a top five. Now, I know, I know, I know, because it happened 2014, it happened 2015, and it's going to happen this year. But I've tried my best to listen to a lot of albums. I tried my best. And just because I do not name a specific album on this list does not mean that I did not listen to it. I just wanted to honorably mention some of these albums, even if they are not on my top five. And obviously my top five might not be your top five, but again, this is my opinion versus your opinion. So it's perfectly fine to let me know what your top five hip hop albums are of this year. I would actually encourage you to do that in the comments section. I also don't want to get into full detail on each album and why I picked it at its place. So we're going to try to make this as quick as possible, but I still want to let you all know what's on my list. So to get started with number five, number five on my list, I had to go with Saba. Had to go with Saba, the bucket list project. Now this was an album that I almost missed but I ended up finding out through Apple Music. Shout out to Apple Music, man. Apple Music has really saved my life this year. But Apple Music showed me that Saba came out with an album. I said, <laughs> hold up, hold up. Saba came out with some stuff. Yes, let me listen to this. And shout out to Chaos, too, because Chaos put me on Saba. And also, I know that Chance the Rapper has had songs with Saba as well. But I had to listen to this Bucket List Project. And it was dope, man. Really dope beats. I really like Saba's sound. Like, Saba just has that specific Chicago sound that I just love at this point. Like, Chicago is on a whole different level when it comes to the music these days. And that it's not all about just uh, the uh, drill music anymore. Like, there are still people scattered amongst all the drill music and through all of that wave that still come out with dope music. That's also positive. Like, Saba actually does come out with positive music. So, I can appreciate that. And if you have not heard any Saba music or have not heard Bucket List Project, I would suggest that you listen to that. Number five comes from another Chicago resident, Chance the Rapper, Coloring Book. Now, originally, this was supposed to be Surf, but Surf already came out as Donnie Trump in the social experiment. So Chance the Rapper brought this out, and then we were trying to figure out what the actual title of the album was going to be. And at first, it was Chance 3, but then he ended up calling it Coloring Book. So again, this was highly, highly anticipated. And this album came out for free. Now, it wasn't available anywhere else for a while. It was only available on Apple uh, iTunes or Apple Music. But this was totally free. So again, anybody could download it, didn't have to pay any money to listen to it. And also, we came across some controversy for any of the songs on this particular album being nominated for a Grammy because it was free. But they ended up bending the rules. So, shout out to whatever or whoever is the Grammy committee for doing that. But, on to the actual album. Um, I listened to this album non-stop when it came out. Non-stop. Like, Chance had an all-star cast of features. And Chance just really, really knows how to make music, man. He really does have music for everybody. He can sing. He can rap. It's all there. It's literally all there. And, I mean, you have Kanye as a mentor. So, <laughs> like, Chance is going to succeed no matter what. Number three comes from Travis Scott, Birds in the Trap, Sing McKnight. Now, on this particular album, he did not have any features listed, actually listed on the titles, but 
the very first song had freaking Andre 3000 on there. Andre 3000. And shout out to Andre 3000 because this man has had a hell of a year. Low, low, low key. The lowest of keys. This man has had an incredible year. His features have been amazing. Amazing. But not only did he have Andre 3000, he had Kendrick Lamar on here. He had Bryson Tiller on here. He had The Weeknd on here. So that's just to name a few of the actual features that he had. And it was very dope. Like, it was surprising me just listening through the entire album and then just hearing the features on here amongst hearing Travis Scott's dope-ass production. So, shout out to Travis Scott, man. Love this second album. The first one, eh, not so much. He has some hits on here. But this one, Birds and Travis Singing the Night, definitely made up for it. And it was worth the little delay that he had. Number two, and this was a surprise for me as well, but I listened to him, I was like, wow, like New York coming back though. But that's that Dave East, Kyrie Channel or Chanel, however you want to call it. This album was dope. Like, we keep talking about Troy Av or Troy Average, whatever you want to call him, when he was claiming that he wanted to bring New York back. But I feel like out of the new people who are really doing it, like keeping the sound totally new york davies hit it on the head davies killed this album and i wasn't really a davies fan yes i know that you know now i saw something in him but i was still on the fence but with this with this album dave east has me as a fan definitely so if you haven't heard this man please listen to that davies fire and my number one hip-hop album 2016 Kanye West Kanye West the life of Pablo what could I say about this album man like it really sucks that Kanye went through what he went through all of the controversy with him uh canceling the rest of his tour all of the shenanigans with him and Kim Kardashian him being you know uh going to a, a rehabilitation clinic uh everybody saying he's crazy and whatnot and then the song that j cole made which was basically about him <laughs> it, it was basically about him but throughout all of that before all of that even happened before the tour was even announced finally 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 came out with the life of pablo the man kanye west is still a freaking genius all of the songs had dope ass production <laughs> even the even the song by himself the guy <laughs> even even that which didn't even have any <laughs> we didn't even have any uh actual production to it you know it was just just kanye being kanye but this album was super dope even with designer basically coming out from left field everybody thinking that it was future including me for a little minute everybody thinking that he was future and basically putting him on the map regardless of how you feel about designer himself that actual song was fire everybody like panda i don't care who you are you like panda you like panda telly not panda express but you like panda like famous was dope and just, oh my god that video yeah that video for famous was definitely definitely controversial but song was dope i actually had the privilege of seeing kanye west in concert and not only did he perform a lot of songs from the life of pablo but he went back to his old catalog as well so you know that old kanye that everybody keeps talking about hey what can you say what can you say about this album was super dope i listened to it constantly when it came out i wasn't feeling that whole title stuff i did not get title i ended up getting that mug by other means until he ended up putting it on the other platforms so it is what it is with that but i got my chance to listen to it and this was pretty much in rotation for like a good month almost now on to all of my honorable mentions so first we have audio push with 90951 we have j cole with for your eyes only which was very very close to making my top five we have abso do what thou wilt which i actually thought was better than schoolboy q's album we'll get to that in a minute we have a9 oh my god a9 vice city and i was really really thinking about putting this on the top five as well and again, do not think, do not think by any means that, you know, I was trying to be biased or anything, but also don't mean that this is a bad album because of course it was not. It was not by any, any means. 
any means. A9, you dope, sir. You dope. Azizi Gibson, A New Life. I actually like that uh, somebody did. I think it was Chaos again, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was Chaos who put me on Azizi Gibson. So Azizi Gibson was dope. I like this album. We had Boss, Too High to Riot. It's very first album. Boss is actually dope, man. I think a lot of people are sleeping on Boss because of J. Cole, but Boss can rap. Boss can rap. Had Flatwood Zombies. 3001 the lace odyssey uh for an album it was not my favorite project that they've come out with but they still had some hits that i did like had that future evo he had a couple hits on here that i like yeah i was messing with it we had the game 1992 i wasn't expecting anything out of this album to be honest but the game has some hits on here i was also considering this for my top five Got Gucci Mane, and this man brought out three albums, but the one that I particularly like was The Return of East Atlanta Santa. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just because it was Christmas time or what, but this album really bumped. We had Haji came out of left field with Fireplace, uh, The Not The Other Side. So this was actually dope as well. Haji, I feel like Haji's mind is in a slightly different place. I can definitely tell on this one, so, um, but if you have not heard Haji or sleeping on Haji, I would check this one out. Had Isaiah Rashad, The Sun's Tirade. A lot of people was hyping Isaiah Rashad up, and a lot of people were anticipating this album. Me, myself included. I wasn't hyping him up, but I was definitely anticipating this album. And it wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. Isaiah Rashad definitely did have some hits that I like, but I don't feel like Isaiah Rashad was at the point that people were trying to put him on as far as the pedestal. At Kid Cudi, Passion, Pain, and Demon Slaying. Kid Cudi did a really, really nice job with this album. This was another top five contender for sure. But I still feel like Kid Cudi has a couple songs that I could skip during the album. So uh, besides those songs that I could definitely skip and, you know, really never listen to again, Kid Cudi had a solid album. Got Lil Durk two times. Now, I am not a Lil Durk fan. I hate it that this man constantly used auto-tune, but I feel like with Lil Durk two times, he finally went back to what got him up to that high pedestal as far as drill rappers in Chicago. He had a lot of hits on here that I definitely bumped. I was like, okay, all right, I see you, Durk. Mick Jenkins, the healing component. I really, really like Mick Jenkins. Another Chicago person, man. Like, Chicago was just doing it big this year. So, Mick Jenkins finally came out with this album. And he has some hits on here I like, too. Uh, Mick Jenkins is kind of on another level when it comes to uh, the type of music that he makes. So, I know that a lot of people wouldn't appreciate what Mick Jenkins has to say. Majority on his, uh, his album with all his content. But, I was messing with it. I like this album. Montana 300, Fire in the Church. Again, another Chicago rapper that I feel is highly, highly underrated. Um, Montana has a problem where he could spit. He can definitely spit on other people's beats, but I feel like he had trouble rapping on his own stuff. So I feel like he had tr trouble being an actual studio rapper, but he actually did a pretty good job with Fire in the Church. Got that Ray Shrimmer. Shrimp Life 2, another highly anticipated album. And everybody knows <laughs> Black Beatles. Of course, you know Black Beatles. It's not even my favorite song on the album. It had to be uh it had to be by chance. Yeah, by chance, by far. <laughs> that was my favorite song. But Race Remember did good though. Um I don't wouldn't say that I like this album better than uh, Shrimp Life, just regular Shrimp Life, but this album definitely had some hits on there as well. Got Run the Jewels. This literally just came out. This wasn't even supposed to come out, but this was a Christmas present to all the fans. Run the Jewels 3, man. Run the Jewels 3. Again, was about to be another top five contender. You really got to listen to Run the Jewels. You really got to listen to Killer Mike and LP. And I know on previous years, they were like, well, did you listen to Run the Jewels? And I was like, nah, I didn't. Well, I'm keeping up with it now. I'm definitely keeping up with it. Tory Lanez, I told you. Now, this was definitely a very, very long, story-driven concept album by Tory Lanez. Again, Tory Lanez is hit or miss for me because I'm not a fan of all the singing. It's okay, though. I know why people do like him. And Tory Lanez only had, like, a few hits on here that bumped, in my opinion. But it was still worth a mention. 
Vince Stables, Prima Donna. Again, I'm kind of on the fence with Vince Stables as well. Vince Stables can definitely rap, but there is still some songs that I'm like, eh, I can pretty much do without. I can skip. I'm not a huge, huge Vince Stables fan, but I can appreciate the West Coast vibe. Young Dolph is Dolph, King of Memphis. Young Dolph finally came out with an album. It took a while, but he finally came out with one because a lot of his stuff had just been random mixtapes or EPs. King of Memphis was actually pretty good, though. I can, I can appreciate King of Memphis. Got Young Thug with Jeffrey. Uh, <laughs> highly, highly controversial album cover. Not really with the album, but the album cover. I know that Black really, really likes <laughs> Jeffrey or Young Thug, whatever he wants to call himself. He has some hits on here, though. He has some hits. I, I'm kind of on the fence with Young Thug. Sometimes he just does some stuff that I just can't excuse. Does some really, really weird stuff that I can't vibe with. But on the other hand, he does come out with some songs that I do like. I'm like, okay, all right, I can, I can bump that. A Tribe Called Quest. We got it from here. Again, this was another album that I was not expecting at all, man. But what else can I say about A Tribe Called Quest, man? They are just classic, classic, man. Shout out to Five Dot, man. RP, RP Dot, RP Five Dot. So it is what it is, but Trial Call Quest definitely had a very, very solid album. And last on my list is Schoolboy Q Blank Face. Now, I know a lot of people, a lot of people had Schoolboy Q in their top five, but I was like, I wasn't really liking this album like everybody else. Schoolboy Q had some songs in there that I did like, but. I'm not really a Schoolboy Q fan compared to the other rappers in TDE like Abso. I do like Abso better than Schoolboy Q. Now, I would put Schoolboy Q definitely ahead of Isaiah Rashad, but it definitely goes Kendrick, Abso, then Schoolboy Q, then, <laughs> then Isaiah, if you want to do it that way. So, that's just my opinion. Overall, man, I know I would probably get a little bit of hate. Hopefully not a lot, man. Don't kill me, man. Don't kill me. But... It is what it is. You know, this is, again, my opinion versus yours. Again, my opinion versus yours. But I hope that you can at least respect my opinion. And again, please be active in the comment section and let me know who you thought your top five albums are. Or if you do actually see any albums on this list that I mentioned as honorable mentions that uh, you feel like should be one on my list, go ahead and mention that. <coughs> yeah you know i don't know about that one don't know about that one that's why i didn't put it on this list but again if you hear any other album that you especially enjoy that you want to mention go ahead and throw it in the comment section as well i will be coming out with the top five mixtapes very very soon I want to make sure that i got this one out the way at least and i'll holler at y'all later man happy holidays negroes